So one of the most controversial, and let's be honest, hated cars is the new Lamborghini Urus. And many of you might disagree with us, but it's time to finally be honest here. There's a lot wrong with this piece of metal. So today, we're going to review the Urus, and we're going to tell you exactly why the way this car is sold is brilliant, but it's not really anything special. First, let's talk about the exterior of the Lamborghini Urus. So when we look at the exterior of the Urus, it's pretty simple and straightforward, right? But that's exactly the issue here. The exterior looks almost identical to an Audi, and we can even give you an alternative to this severely overpriced car. The RSQ8 for 140k is fully loaded, which is 120k less than this Urus, which is a super loaded 260k spec. So you have to ask yourself, is the Urus really better? And the best part is that the Audi even looks technically better than this. So it's clear that the issue right away is that it looks like an Audi, and you really have to double take when you see it driving to really realize it's a Lamborghini. The tires are good though. It has the 22 inch wheels, and you can even get 23s. But the 22s are better, especially if you're going to use it every day as a family car. Car. So if we just look at the outside, it's not a terrible car. It's attractive enough for an SUV, but the paint job's decent too. But then again, it still looks like an Audi, so that's a big no for us. The additional scent of vent-like stylistic components, which meet at a sharp angle and flow down to the bottom portions of the fascia, add some sharpness to the already bulky SUV. A slightly updated bumper and false diffuser on the round back give the car a new look. We'll be able to see more after the camouflage is taken off, and we can expect changes to the cabin as well. Next, how good is the interior? So this is where our complaints take a break as the Lamborghini Urus's interior is highly functional, usable, and comfy. The inside has a unicolor concept. The leather trim is available in either Grigio Octans or Nero Aid, i.e. black or gray, with a further five unidentified alternative colors. With options like open pore wood combined with aluminum and carbon fiber, the dashboard is finished in piano black and brushed aluminum. A lot of connectivity capabilities are promised by the infotainment system, and the Lamborghini smartphone interface is compatible with Apple and Android devices. The LIS infotainment system has two screens. The upper screen is used for media, navigation, phone calls, and vehicle status. The lower screen is used for climate control and seat heating. A keyboard and handwritten commands are supported for entering information on the lower screen as well. So overall, we can't really complain about the interior at all. It's playful, sleek, and it works. The smoothness and speed of these commands are really what sets the car apart from its competitors, and you can maybe make an argument about the price. And that's not all. There's some more changes too. When we look at what's more it's bringing to the table, Lamborghini's Steven Winkleman provided some information on the even more extreme Urus model, which is most likely to be called the Evo, in an interview with the British automobile journal Autocar. Before 2024, the Super SUV will receive two sets of improvements, according to the CEO. The bulky Urus will weigh slightly less than the heavy 4,850 pounds of the present model, thanks to weight reduction, and more power than the 4-liter V8's already potent 641 horsepower is anticipated. It's sad that there's no V12 under the bonnet, but we guess that's wishful thinking. It's expected that the facelifted Super SUV would use the Evo name, just like with the upgraded Huracan that was unveiled in 2019. The Urus will have hybrid technology in 2024 before a fully electric version completely replaces it. In fact, Lamborghini intends to introduce the final non-electric vehicle soon. The Huracan Technica has already been introduced, and a high-riding Huracan Sterato is expected to drop soon. So while the SUV was extremely boring on the outside, it makes up for it with its smart interior. But it still doesn't hide away the fact that the exterior is way too much like an Audi, which doesn't make this purchase feel worth the whopping 250 50 grand. But wait, is there really nothing wrong with the interior? Well, the interior really is great, but we're not here to be nice about the car. We're here to absolutely rip it apart. So, what's up with the back seats? Why are they two separate ones and not a bench seat? Who thought of that? It would have been way more practical as a family car and daily driver with the bench seat. And boy, don't get us started on the cup holder. It carries the thinnest of all cups and bottles. And everything else, well, Lamborghini doesn't want you to bring it into their previous car. You can't blame them since you're paying for the car with a kidney, but why can't they have functional cup holders in their cars? You'll make the nicest interior ever seen in an off-roader, but not let people keep their Starbucks coffee in the holder? What's up with that? So what are the driving modes and off-road attributes like? When we look at the different driving modes, we have four options. Strata, Terra, for off-road driving, Sabia, for driving on sand, and Neve, for snow. Torque vectoring assists in supplying more oversteer in sport and Corsa settings in order to ensure agility and precision on terrains with less grip. The Sabia mode is calibrated. This makes it the ideal option for an off-road adventure. It's so hilarious to imagine this 250 grand grand SUV dune serving, and we'd bet that the off-roader really isn't built for it. Using what appears to be the same mechanism as the Aventador S, the Lamborghini Urus also incorporates rear-wheel steering. Anything that can reduce the turning radius must be viewed as good since, let's face it, this is a big and heavy vehicle. The brakes measure 440 by 40 millimeters at the front and 370 by 30 millimeters at the back. And now, is the Urus really worth the trouble? So like all these fancy cars, the experience isn't going to be low-key. When you park, people are definitely going to do double takes. So that's definitely 
definitely an important thing to consider if you're thinking of buying it. If you need it as a daily driver, and you don't live in a place that has huge climate issues or anything, you should be fine. But let's face it, if you really need a daily car, why not just go for the G-Wagon? It's way more versatile and actually more capable in bad weather, and there are bumper guards for extra safety and recklessness too. This SUV would have been the best-selling car of all time if it was 150 grand, and it really would have put the Cayenne out of business all day long. Sadly, we live in a world where Lamborghini will still sell every last car at that insane price tag, no matter if the car is actually even worth all that dough. So that's the part that we just don't understand. How does the company that gets the most attention on the road with its flashy cars make a car that looks like an Audi? That's a fatal flaw if we've ever seen any. We just can't see it being worth it, especially with so many better options on the better right now. Now, while the Urus might be better than the Bentayga 250 vehicle, you can also get a Bentayga used for 120 grand, and you're absolutely delusional if you think you can get a used Urus for any less than 200 grand, and even that blows a hole right through your wallet. And now the final verdict, why you shouldn't buy the new Urus. So when it comes down to it, is the new 2023 Lamborghini Urus worth the 250 grand? Well, we don't think so. Not only does it look like a Lambo, it's also really pricey. So if it attracts attention, it's not really a great choice for a everyday car, right? You don't want to worry about it if you've left it parked for a few hours. And on the other side, you're also not getting enough bragging points because it's not your typical Lambo. So our final verdict is, only buy the car if you really want to blow the extra cash. Yes, it definitely has some features that separate it from the rest. The interior and its control are revolutionary, no doubt. But if you want a great daily SUV that isn't so catastrophic on your budget, then there's quite a few options on the market. One thing is for certain though, Lamborghini's done well on the marketing front, and they know everything they put out's going to sell like hotcakes. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think the Lamborghini Urus is worth the hefty price tag, or do you think it's overrated too? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching our video, and have a great day. See you next time.